about uh, September the 7th or so, 1976, there was a revival getting ready to put, get getting ready to take place in Florida, where several messianic synagogues, including uh, one that's probably one of the biggest in the United States, was founded. And about a hundred years before that, in 1876, around September the 7th, there was a little town in Northfield in Minnesota. And there were two gangs of outlaws, Cole and Bob Younger, and their brothers and the other people in their gang, plus Jesse James and his brother, Frank. And they had spotted and cased a particular bank that they were gonna rob. And this, this bank in North Hill, Minnesota, September 7th, 1876, about 2 p.m. in the afternoon, the gang divided itself into two groups. There were three men that were gonna enter the bank, but there were two that were gonna guard the door outside to keep anyone from coming into the bank or leaving the bank. And then there were gonna be three who would be by a bridge across an adjacent square. So they had everything planned out. When the robbers went inside the bank, they had a big problem immediately because the cashier refused to open the safe. He falsely claimed that it was secured by a time lock and even though they held a Bowie knife to his throat and they cracked his skull with a pistol, but he refused to give them any money out of the safe. Then there was this other assistant cashier and he got wounded in the shoulder because he tried to run through the back door of the bank to get out. Meanwhile, as the teller was exiting the bank through the back door, at the front door, there were citizens who saw that they were not being allowed to enter the bank, that there were these men guarding the door, and this aroused their suspicion. And so the people took cover and got their own guns out. And as the three bank robbers came out and, he, and they shot some bullets into the air to uh, clear the streets and drive the townspeople out of the streets, what happened was the townspeople took cover, got their own guns out and started firing back from their protected positions. And they shot two of the bandits dead right on the spot. They wounded the rest in a barrage of fire. And any outlaws that were left were, were starting to flee but as they left, an unarmed cashier was shot. He was shot in the head. And uh, the gang barely escaped Northfield, leaving two dead companions behind and a posse hot on their heels. And of course, all of them were rounded up except 
for Frank and Jesse James, whose careers were pretty much over anyway. And Jesse James would be assassinated and Frank would have his own story to tell. But you might wonder, well, why am I going into this long story? What's the point? What am I getting at? Well, just as those poor, unwitting bank tellers had big problems, you, my friend, whoever you are, have many problems yourself. There's a gang, you might say, getting ready to assault you. And there you are behind the, the teller's window, hoping you're safe. But the scriptures tell you, first of all, you have the gang leader, the, the evil one. He's against you, but he's not the only one in the gang, you have the Olam Hazeh, you have the world. If anyone loves the world, the Ahavas Hashem is not in him. So you have all of the distraction and the fleeting glory and dying brilliant world luring you. Then besides the Olam Hazeh, you have the Ta'ava, the lust of the Basar, that uh, head god moan craving inside you that is a family trait going down the generations from the fall the good I want to do, I don't do. The evil I don't want to do, that's what I do. I'm enslaved. And who will deliver me from this basar, this body of death? Then the other thing you have is the ta'ava of the eyes. Everywhere you look, there are allurements. Then besides that, you have the gava, the pride. Uh, pride in the Hashuva prominence of what one has in this life, one's vital possessions. You want people to know you have money, so you purchase a very expensive foreign sports car. When you go to buy a dog, you don't buy any dog. You don't go to the pound and get an adoption dog. You get a poodle and you take the poodle and get it groomed so that it is extremely rich looking and that it sends a message. It, it tells everyone about the upscale life that you live and your home and your summer home and everything about you is gava, pride. And all of this is not of the Atik Yobin, but it's of the Olam Hazer. And here is another problem. Unless the Atik Yobin draw you, you will not come to the Bar Enosh. And by the way, it says that God, that his feet are on the darkness and the glory clouds. It's not a mere man, the Bar Enosh, that Rashi says is the Melik HaMoshiach Messiah. This one is God. He is served as deity and worshiped. Pei Lamed Het, an Aramaic word. And the friends of Daniel will not pay Lamed Het, the idols of Nebuchadnezzar. That's why they go into the fiery furnace. But there's one in the furnace with them, the Zun Funderoibishter, the 
the Ben Hyalokim. And it says, who has thrown the stars in the sky? What is his name and what is his son's name? And that son, that Baranosh, comes on the glory clouds. And there are three scriptures about him. Not just Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. Not just Isaiah 7.14, the El Gibor child of the Alma virgin. Not just Micah chapter 5 about being born in Bethlehem, but it says that in Bethlehem, it says, speaking of the woman, the Freud, the one who has the seed, and the seed is the one that bruises the evil one and crushes his head it says therefore will he give them up to their enemies until the time that she which travaileth in in uh, labor we're talking about the uh, giving birth the labor of of bearing a child until she which travaileth hath brought forth and uh, that's when things start looking up for you however if you've been taught all your life to blaspheme that name and never pronounce that name and if his name has been mocked and vilified by everyone around you, and if all the people in your family and everyone you know and all your rabbis, if they all would bend over backwards to talk you out of believing in him, then you have a whole uh, gang of outlaws coming to your bank where you are the teller and you are in very grave very grave condition and that's the way I was in 1971 and my mother had come all the way to Beverly Hills to try to drag me to the house of God and I didn't want to go. And I was a dissolute sinner. And my time was running out. You might say the outlaws have just had just ridden into town and they were putting their plan in place. And I would have been a whole lot better off if I hadn't showed up for work that day as a teller in that particular bank. Because I was marked for destruction. And there's something called gay Hinom, and it is an eternal fire. That's what Isaiah says. If Isaiah is enough of a prophet to see all of this in advance, and if he tells me that Gehinom is Esh Olam, I better believe it. He was wrong about he was right about too many things to be wrong about hell. And so in 1971, in the spring, just about this time of year, because of my father and his mental condition. I thought it might help him if I took him and my mother to the house of God. Little did I know what was waiting for me. The Ruach HaKodesh was going to fall on me 
like Niagara Falls. There was going to be tears by the bucketful. The Ruach HaKodesh was going to examine me and show me my lost condition. I was going to repent with great sadness and sorrow about my life. 28 years, completely wasted life, completely lost. And I saw suddenly that I had to turn my life completely, lock, stock, and barrel over to the Savior of the Scriptures. Now, maybe you haven't reached that point yet. I'm, I'm not sure that anything would have happened to me if I hadn't completely turned my life over. I knew my my life was 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 a waste. I knew I had ruined my life. I knew that I was lost. I knew that my my life was worth nothing. I knew I was in trouble with God. I knew I needed a savior. I knew that God was dealing with me. My tears were telling me that God was dealing with me. The tears went on and on and on. People looked at me, what was going on? What was going on was salvation. And my friend, you have to realize that you are as in just as much trouble as I was. Because the world, the flesh, and the devil are coming for you. And there will be hell to pay. And death is the great evil finality of everything. You can't try to sugarcoat this picture. There's no way to make it look better than it is. This is what salvation entails. Coming to the end of yourself and crying out to the Savior. And there's only one Savior. His name is given to you in the Tanakh. It is that name, Joshua, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -E that name that is hated. But it's the name given in the Tanakh, in Zechariah 6, 11, and 12. And there's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you have to do what I did that day. You have to cry out to God to have mercy on you and receive him. And here's the good part. He will come and save you. He can save you. He will save you. He wants to save you. And that's why the Atikyomin sent the Bar Enosh, to save you and many others. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life. I admit I'm a sinner. I admit my mitzvahs have gotten me nowhere. That if I depend upon them, the curse of Devarim 27-26 will come after me like a posse and track me down and I will not be able to escape like Jesse and Frank James did that day. I will not be able to escape. Moshiach ben Dovid, have mercy upon me, a sinner. I receive you. The Rebbe Melik HaMoshiach of the Tanakh who destroyed death and brought immortality to light, whose body did not see Shahat, who walked out of the grave, 
who is at the right hand of God, who is our Kohen Le'olam, al Divati Melchizedek, who is our lamb led to the slaughter, the Se, the Korban Pesach of our redemption and our salvation. We come to him, we receive him to cover all of our sins and have mercy upon us. We thank you for his Korban Kapora that washes away all our Averos. And everybody said, Amen.